Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert with yet another five things you may or may not know about Pro Tools. We'll get straight on with these. The first of them is how to view your entire session using two keystrokes. The point of this is that, I mean, lots of people are perfectly happy to not change their track height that much, to go up and down like so, maybe uh, add shift to that scroll wheel and move up and down the timeline like so. That's not for me. I like to zoom out so I can see the whole thing or as much of the whole thing as possible. Select the bit that I want to have a look at, zoom in, have a look at it, and then do the reverse and come back out again so I can see the whole thing again and start again and go to where I want to go to next. The way to do that is to zoom out horizontally so you can see your whole session and then to zoom vertically so that you can see all the tracks. To zoom out horizontally, hold Option and A, Alt and A on a PC, and that will zoom out horizontally so you can see the whole session from the the beginning to the last event on your timeline. And then to zoom out vertically, hold, hold what's called the power claw. That's all three modifiers. On a Mac, that's Control, Option, and Command. On a PC, it's Start, Control, and Alt. But anyway, those three in a line, and just hit up or down on the arrow keys. Doesn't matter which. And you'll get something like that. Now I can see my whole session. Now, if you've got too many tracks, and it goes try to go smaller than the minimum track height, then it's not all going to fit. But for me, this works very well. And then if I want to zoom in on something in particular, let's say I want to have a look at this uh, this bit down here, this bit of vocal. If I make an edit selection, I could use something like zoom toggle, hit E. I'll zoom me in, I can see what's going on. Hit E again, I can zoom back out to where I was. You can do that across multiple tracks if you want to. If you like that level of zoom, you can even hit Option and Shift and then hit E again, and you can come out of zoom toggle which is indicated by this button up here, without toggling back to your previous level of zoom, like so. Anyway, there we are. That's how to view your whole session in two keystrokes. They were Option and A and Power Claw up or down. Next, if we're talking about automation, we've got the waveform view there. We've got uh, a few automation views down here, which are enabled by default, volume and pan and sends, and then a couple of others. But if you want to, say, automate a plugin, say this trim plugin, which isn't the most exciting plugin in the world, but very useful nonetheless, what you'd have to do is you'd have to click on here and then add one of these, let's say bypass, add that, so that becomes automation enabled. And then when I come back out of here, look on here, we'll see there's an extra entry on that drop-down list. That's great. However, most people figure out pretty quickly that if you want to add something, what you do is you uh, power claw those three modifiers again and click on it, and then you can enable it by doing it from the GUI, like so. That's great, and you'll see that that's now added to that list. But what happens if you want to automate everything by default, well, what you can do is you can hold that same power claw and click on there, and then everything that you can automate in here, which in this plugin isn't many things, admittedly, gets lit up green, meaning that it's now automatable. Great stuff. However, what happens if you want to then get around what you're doing? Well, I mean, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open uh, a delay plugin. If we click on here, we'll see we've got a ton of automatable parameters. Now, I can add all of those. Of course I can. So what I'll do is I'll power claw onto there and everything becomes automation enabled. If I come down on here and hold my view like so, we've got a ton of stuff. However, how do I then quickly view that automation? Well, what I'll do is uh, I'll just enlarge this a little. And then from here, what I can do is if I want to view the automation for bypass, for example, I hold Control and Command, click on there, there's bypass. Same on delay time, there we go. And you see down the bottom, we're changing delay time. For, same for feedback, feedback like so. So I don't have to navigate this gigantic list that's been created in any reasonably complex plugin, like, for example, a reverb. How do you get back to uh, a waveform view in, a, uh, in a, an audio track, though? If I come back on here, and we're in here, and we'll say view the uh, mute automation, if I want to get back to the waveform view, all I have to do is just command click on the track name, and we'll be back on the waveform again. Very useful. You have to know how to get back out again. So that was how to quickly view automation on a per parameter basis. Try that with a compatible control surface. It's absolutely fantastic. Next up, how to temporarily clear your clips list. Over here, you'll see we've got uh, not a great deal of stuff. This isn't a very big session, but we've got a bunch of stuff. 
And if I want to clear this out so that I can then import some some audio files, for example, and only be able to see them. It makes it much easier to find. That's why I use it when I'm, for example, editing a podcast. All you do is you come up here to this clips menu and you don't clear. You don't want to do that. You want to go find. And from find, click this include subsequently added clips. That's all you do. You'll see it's already been cleared and it's got this little icon here showing there's a search active. And that's all you do. And then anything that you add is going to show up here. Everything else is still there. And once you clear that find, it will reappear again. So for example, here, I'll just uh, select something here and I'll consolidate it to make a new file. There you go. There's a new file on disk and it's the only thing I can see. If I were to import some files, they'd all show up there. That's what I tend to use it for. If you want to get out of that, all you need to do is just come back to here to find and just clear that find again and you're back where you were, and you can see everything that was in your session, or at least everything that was displayed in your clips list. Okay, clip gain. Let's talk about clip gain. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this bass track, for example, and uh, you probably know about clip gain already. You can click down here, and there's this little fader, and that's not waveform zoom. That's actually changing the clip gain, changing how loud it is coming into your inserts. Now, you can access that. Actually, uh, you can view the clip gain line if you hold control or start on a PC, shift and minus, and you can see the clip gain line from that. It's quite useful. If you want to see the clip gain info, like where that little minus 2.8 is, hold those same two modifiers and hit plus, and that will toggle that on and off. So if you can't see that, that's where there is. However, if I want to, say, clip gain something, very often what I'll do is I'll just hold control and shift and just do it from my scroll wheel, which is fine. But if you want a little bit more control, then holding those two modifiers again and using the up and down arrows is a way that you can get nice, precise control. Only thing is, you might want to change that default value because you might find that you end up tapping forever like so. You can do that from the Pro Tools preferences. Just come up here, preferences, and in the editing tab, I think the default value is 0 0.5 dB. It's so long since I've had it set to the default, I'm not quite sure, but I think it is. What I tend to do is I tend to have that set to uh, set to 3, actually 3, not, not 0.3. That's quite coarse, but that actually suits my purposes. So if I come over here and I hold Control and Shift again, Start and Shift on a PC, I've got much coarser clip gain, like so, which suits me. Anyway, that's where you go to change it. Okay, next up, back into the same tab of the Pro Tools preferences. And you'll see under here, what we've got is we've got for the one to five number keys, they control zoom presets. They control zoom presets by default. They're these up here. And if you press one, two, three, four, five, you get various levels of zoom. I never, ever use those. I have other ways that I zoom in like that. I, I just don't use them. So you can repurpose them for something else. So if you hold Option and 6 or Alt and 6 on a PC, it doesn't matter which 6, you can open up the Clip Effects view. That's moved since early versions of Pro Tools, but it works exactly the same. And you'll see you've got these five preset buttons here. And uh, you can access those and save presets and click on here and it'll apply it to your, your selection uh, like any clip effect would. However, if you come back up here and you go to Preferences, you can repurpose them so that and so those one to five keys invoking those zoom presets, they can invoke the clip effects presets instead. So that's what you can do. What can you use it for? We can use it for absolutely anything, but one that I use it for a lot is uh, for putting in various degrees of high pass filter for catching mic pops or table thumps or something like that on podcasts. Very, very useful. Single tap on a keyboard, and there you go. You've got that. So that was my five things. They were view your whole session in two keystrokes. Um, showing automation using uh, control and command and clicking on the uh, on the control in the UI. Uh, temporarily clearing the clips list using uh, a null search and checking that uh, subsequently added box. Changing the clip gain amount so that you can uh, use uh, clip gain keystrokes uh, with a bit more control, either in terms of how coarse or fine it is, to your own taste. And swapping those one to five keys from invoking Zoom presets to invoking clip effects presets. So that's my five. I hope there's something new to you in there.